trustees meeting on July 15th, 2024. I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of our July 1st meeting. And I second. We move and second. Any discussion? I have one comment. I found an error on it this afternoon. I have corrected. Um, the day before the zoning commission hearing tomorrow night was misstated. It has been corrected. Thank you. I found one little thing. Uh, somewhere in the fire department, uh, Debbie said the cost of repairing the door would be between 800 and 1500 That has been corrected as well. That is not, okay, great, thank you. Any other changes? I couldn't find any. Please call the roll. There has been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of July 1st, 2024 as noted. Corrections, Mr. Mutter. Yes, yes, yes. It's raining. Yeah. I'd entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling twenty nine thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars and twenty one cents from the general fund. Fire fund nineteen thousand five hundred fifty three dollars and one cent. On road three thousand nine hundred thirty one dollars and sixty seven cents. Do I hear a motion? And move the repair bills. <laughs> Discussion. Let's call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of twenty nine thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars and twenty one cents as enumerated. Ms. Moran. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion approved. Well, make note of correspondence from the Clean Grid Alliance Public Information or Clean Grid Alliance the Public Information Request. Although technically, I don't know that it's formal public information request, but they wanted to know how much we had spent uh, in our latest uh, challenge of solar project. Uh, and the rest, I don't see anything else. Yeah, there's the Regional Planning Commission Executive Committee agenda. Resignation of Carrie Smith from being our zoning inspector, and we'll discuss that later. Uh, an update from Miami Valley Regional Plan. We have a couple of guests here that we're going to run through the agenda, and new business and old business will have from Vesper Energy and from uh, our, one of our members of the Yellow Springs Development Corporation. Uh, any other items to add to the agenda? We had the fire department report. Okay, we had uh, 25 EMS calls, um, 12 fire, um, couple of them just a minute ago actually. Uh, mutual aid request for one fire, that was a tanker request that was there. We received three EMS and one fire mutual aid call. Uh, um, I won't mention the name, but we had a firefighter injury uh, last night during the storm. Um, one of our part-time people, and they were chainsawing a tree, one limb fell down. He was actually bent over and hit him right in the lumbar area, and he's oh, got geez. four fractures, oh, unfortunately. So, so that's about all I know right now. Um, it was not, he was not injured here. He was injured at another department that he's on. That's about all I can say about it. Uh, I'll probably see him 
depending on how long he's in the hospital for. Um, so that's uh, obviously pretty unfortunate. Um, as you guys were aware, as I stated in the email, we had a, uh, uh, basically a cot crisis where both of our cots went out of service for a period of time. Um, one was an electrical issue, one was a mechanical. The one that was electrical in nature was required to go back to the manufacturer for repair, so that's been done. The other one was was um, uh, taken care of on Friday. Um, that does kind of bring up I the the manuf or the the authorized repair company for Fernero Washington, the cot manufacturer, is a company named MSAR that we've used for quite a period of time. It took them two weeks to come out to fix one of the cots. Um, so I will one of our uh, issues is that we're already looking at needing to replace one of the cots. Um, I got a $40,000 grant from BWC, um, but the new cots are $67,000. Yeah. So I have to come up with 27K to be able to actually match our funding portion to be able to actually replace that cot. Um, so I mean, work on that here. Um, no need to worry about it too urgently. Um, another item, this is not on there. Um, I unfortunately found out a couple of weeks ago that our two life packs, which are the defibrillators on each of the ambulances, <clears throat> the original one we purchased, which I believe is around 18 years old now, is a version one of that. It no longer can be serviced. So when it dies, it can't be, repla it can't be repaired. Um, the other one has six months before it uh, is no longer service repairable. Um, of course, uh, Stryker just came out with the replacements in the United States for these. They're $55,000 of these. Um, so we can certainly get away with replacing one and they will actually do financing through their, through Stryker. So we're not looking at 100% upfront cost, I and mean, it was around 19,000 um, a year to, to do one. So Zero percent financing, same day. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they, they're not doing it for free. That's for sure. I don't have all those specific details, but I know it's definitely not that. Um, you can't even get a demo of one yet. The ironic thing, of course, is they've been out in Europe for over a year, but you know, FDA works a lot slower for device approval in the United States. Um, and uh, just a couple of maintenance items. So I, ha I have not had, uh, just as a follow-up, I have not had um, uh, overhead door out for, for the door maintenance yet, but we should be able to get that scheduled in, in about two more weeks. I did have AC service out twice. We had a capacitor go out in the bunk room fan motor, so that was taken care of. And then we had a water leak in one of the return lines for the water heater, which I don't know how Nate managed to find it, because it was actually running down through and coming out and dropping down into our gear room. So that was fixed. Luckily, both of those were, were fairly quick repairs. And that's actually all I had. I was wondering when they, when you say that, when you give us emails about the medic cuts, I I picture the things you pull out, you know, they're on wheels and mm -hmm. they cost sixty seven thousand dollars. So the so the the um, the striker cot is a hundred and sixty seven pounds. The Fresno cots are three hundred. So when they mechanically fail, if I have a two hundred pound patient, it's now a five hundred pound lift. Um, yeah, nothing about these are self raised yeah, yeah. unless they fail. Yeah. Um, then the uh, so we have a substantial reduction in weight uh, as well as significantly more structurally sound. But one of the other issues that we've, we've had with these cots is the charging mechanism. Uh, it actually comes in and interfaces with a five pin plug, so to speak. And we've had a ton of trouble with that. Uh, the striker cots actually are charged like, you know, more modern cell phone where you just drop it on a pad. So you literally just shove it in and it lines up and locks in place. 
Um, there's been a lot of cop changes in the last 10 years, improving all, you know, in terms of overall safety. Um, it, I, I was quite impressed with when we demoed that cop, that's for darn sure. But I'm amazed at, it's like everything we're dealing with and everything government purchases, our prices are just going through the roof. We, you know, we know that everything is going on so much. Uh, the mutual aid request that we received, three were for EMS, that is the ambulance. Yes. Or an ambulance. And we answered all, you only list them when we reply to them? Correct. Or? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in talking about the $67,000 cot, you said there's a 40000 grant from who? PWC, Bureau of Workers' Comp. Okay, that's... Yeah, you can apply for certain VWC grants every three years, um, and... Are you saying that they'll pay $40,000 in this kind? Okay, that's better. Yeah, actually, I should... In theory, we should have that money in the bank in probably about, I want to say, four to six weeks, and just direct deposit it right into our checking account. I just then have to provide the appropriate documentation back once we've expended the, the money. Okay. Then I, maybe I just missed it, but you listed August 3rd fireworks parade, touch of trouble. Oh, I didn't, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry, I skipped that. So I, you guys probably heard, obviously, you know, we canceled the 4th of July fireworks. So we've gotten that rescheduled. Um, we all met in here um, after I, Pull the plug on the fireworks. Um, there was planned a touch a truck event that the police department sponsors where we bring in fire trucks, some of the village equipment and that for the kids to come look at and kind of play with. So we're going to do, the plan is we're going to do the parade. The time has changed, but I don't remember what it is. The touch a truck and then the fireworks sort of as a late afternoon into the evening and then into right into the fireworks, so that'll be August 3rd. Uh, there'll be more details on that um, in on Facebook and the, those other appropriate sites. Like Yellow Springs News. Yeah. Uh, any questions? No. Nope. Thank you. Dan. Cemetery? Yes, sir. Since last meeting, we've had no burials, but we will this week try to move two ashes. One in Clifton and one in Glen Forest is coming Friday. They plan on paving in the cemetery this week. We're ready for them. It doesn't matter when they get in there. They need a smaller machine. So that's in Glen Forest? Yes, sir. And the Oak Grove Drive is in the base of the end. We have to add some more gravel to it so far. It's in. Looks pretty good. Yeah. You driven on it? Yeah. Yeah. Gravel still moves. It's staying gravel. Yeah, it'll stop once I get some. Right. Get some new gravel or some more gravel, a finer gravel, it'll tighten up a lot more. It'll look pretty good. Yeah, it's not going to stay the way it is. Once I, once I top it off, it will. Well, yeah. <laughs> take care of that in a uh, week, <coughs> week or two whenever we get where the things caught up. That's all I have for cemetery. If you have more for me. Road report. Okay. Uh, they paved Carolyn Lamont and done it Friday late or Saturday, I'm not sure. It's they're done, they've done a nice job. We got an issue with a car parked on the road out there on Carroll. They park on the road. Can we do something about sending a letter and say you can't do that until you do it? Which road? Carroll. Carroll Drive. At the end, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I don't know whether we have the authority to do that. I, I wonder because they, they always park on the road and it's really difficult in the wintertime when you're trying to plow. It's kind of difficult. Issue for me too. We know we have to issue for me some kind of Yeah, an issue for you too. Mm -hmm. I will uh, inquire. Maybe send them a letter or something. 
Sheriff's Department and Prosecutor's Office. Okay. <coughs> Our new mower has, has arrived. The new mowing machine came last right week, right Thursday. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It, it came with a deck that we didn't expect to get for what? Month? Another six weeks. Six came weeks. In, yeah, that came out early. So it is serviceable now. Oh, it's in service. Have we given back our borrowed one? Yes. Uh -huh. We'll return this morning. Mm -hmm. Don't need it. So we're good to go there. We'll go back to normal. We borrowed that from Bath Township. I thank them very much for their generosity of letting us use it for a month or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no chip seal yet, but hopefully soon. Remind me which. Which roads? North River and Harvest. I marked them off. I marked them off. And I'll talk to them. They'll, they'll be here as soon as they can. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have anything else. Um, we'll probably maybe be passing a motion to uh, go, go ahead and have a, a lease agreement with any broadband out there. Uh, they were wondering, is do you have drawing? Did you have texted in? No, any drawings. Um, there might want, be some. They wanted, I don't know where they be. They want to make sure there's no water lines or, or, or drainage lines going right up to the left as you're facing it, right at the left hand side of the corner. Certainly not the left side, the right side. There's between the two. Mm -hmm. There's an air line from the shop out to there, but it's, it's a man and we don't use it, so could they got into it, it wouldn't matter. I mean, electric line right out the way. It's going down, and I'm, yeah, it sticks out of the building. They could clearly see it, but I don't know where it feeds okay. from. And and the telephone line. Tell them not to do anything right without directly talking with yeah. them. Yeah. Should, should they meet with Johnny just to make sure? Yeah, just to make sure. I know on the, on the Yellow Springs Fairfield, there's, there's a phone line, but I think it's actually abandoned. But there's no sewer or water on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, Nothing else? I didn't have a chance to look at the roads, but as I believe they're all nicely mowed and trimmed. We have, uh, I think I've got five to mow, and we're in the middle of trimming, about halfway down on the trim. Oh, well, we're not as far along as I thought we were going to be. We're, we're moving. Um, yeah, it's not a road mower, but hopefully after the roads get done, we'll be able to. Yeah, probably this week I'll, I'll, we'll be close to me then this week. Besides Friday, we get the ashes. Uh, shouldn't take too long. We'll plug it away. That's all I have. Thank you. Anything else? On uh, under fiscal officer's report, we have just a minor item of passing budget for 2025. Uh, and we have a brief resolution. This will be resolution 2024-27. Resolved that the attached budget for 2025 be adopted. Do I hear a motion? Short and sweet. Uh, I'll move for adoption of resolution 2024 27. 20, 27. 27, yeah. I'll second that. Well, I'll take credit for the brief wording. <laughs> And you will sign the official paper that yes. goes back. After we vote on it. For any discussion of this uh, document? I don't know. Please call the roll. As we move in second to adopt resolution 2024-27 of the 2025 budget as will be attached. Uh, Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. 
chair, you have a hand up in there. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, sir. I just wondered if such a proposed budget is available to the public. Is that the only copy I don't know we have? No, we have many copies. Okay. You have many copies, oh, okay. Well, yes. we have as many as we need, and we can make as many well, more as I will yeah. need. It was advertised in the Yellow Springs News. This is available. To, um, we, we, by law, um, have to make it available for 10 days, starting July 5th and ending July 15th. Well, it's available after the 15th also. It'll be available all year. Uh, that period of time is, is in order right. to make any changes that may be requested or pointed out by the, by the public. Because once it's adopted, it's, it's done. Once it gets to the auditor's or the auditor's office, and it's there, so it's set in stone. The zoning inspector report, which is usually the first meeting of the month, it's a, an occasion in our agenda's agenda to announce that Terry Smith is resigning and taking a job with Clinton County. Um, we're interviewing a possible replacement. Uh, before we get to new business, old business, standing committee reports in VRPC. Uh, Miami Valley Regional Plan. Can you think of regional plan? I have not heard. Not heard. The the county, county regional plan. County, um, I, I was, actually, I was not able to, to I had conflicts on last month. I was not able to go to either meeting, but I actually have been spending a fair amount of time down there, not a fair amount of time, but sometime down there. We've had personnel problems and the, I can't go into them, <laughs> but so I've I've been doing stuff, but just not planning stuff. So, and mm -hmm. I, I hope we get this straightened out because it's sad. Mm -hmm. The uh, Clifton Union Cemetery. We finally had a meeting. And as you recall, we had been given a house and we sold the house, but it's now an endowment. And as a union cemetery between two different political jurisdictions, two townships, uh, we're a little, it's kind of fuzzy, uh, and we're trying to find where are we allowed to invest that money. It would like to be in uh, one of the state mutual, state control mutual funds, uh, but we haven't gotten word from the county prosecutor's office, and then we're in two different counties, and so which county prosecutor, Clark County said they didn't want to talk to us. So, uh, it's an interesting problem to suddenly have $94,000 to hide somewhere, invest somewhere. Uh, that's it. Okay. And then YS Development Corporation, that's later on the agenda. I haven't heard anything from the Green County Township Association meeting. No. Uh, last week there was a meeting that I didn't go to in Jamestown. Yeah. And there's some things going on that Metro Bureau Committee, but nothing noteworthy that we have to share publicly right now. Well, we go on to new business, and we have two staff members of the Vesper Energy here to update us on the situation. Maybe <laughs> Hannah, Lindsay. Yeah, thank you. I'm and sorry. No, Hannah Lindsay. And, no, Hannah <laughs> and Lindsay. There you go. Lindsay Workman and Hannah, whose last name I don't know. <laughs> Hannah Larkin. I'm a development manager with Vesper Energy. 
I oversee our Kingwood Solar Project and our Aviation Energy Center Project here in uh, Grey County. And Lindsay Workman, I'm the Community Affairs Manager for those projects as well. I feel silly introducing myself since I met all of you, but yeah, hi. Thank you for having us today. And we do have a few minor updates that we'll all let him take over and speak about. Um, I have some like introductory slides that would have been helpful if we had a lot of new faces in the audience. Um, I would like to send this PowerPoint deck to you all the trustees to add to the record, so anyone who wants to view this can. Um, but if you're comfortable, I'd like to skip the introductory slides. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if anyone has questions, we can stick around to address them. Um, it's just you know who Vesper is, and I think most of you know who Vesper is at this point. There's even a lovely little slide that has a bio of us. So yeah, I think we can skip those. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to jump right into what's new. Uh, so we came to the township in December to present the Aviation Energy Center project concept and solicit feedback from the community. Um, we, you know, obviously learned a lot from the Kingwood project and really wanted to start a new project from the community up. Um, so we have done that in earnest and came here in December to solicit feedback and get ideas, okay, where can we put this thing? What does this community care about when considering solar, um, if you know, it's being considered? Um, so we have had one-on-one -on -one meetings and a lot of engagement with the community. Lindsay is out here weekly engaging with different organizations, and we've gotten a ton of really valuable feedback. Um, that led us to hosting a meet and greet event in April. We held one in Miami, um, Cedarville, and Vina to gather feedback and really just show up where the people are in the community in a less formal setting. Um, we gathered a lot of data. Yeah, a lot <laughs> more data um, from those meetings. I'll review some of the key takeaways for siting solar. Um, that's what we were really looking for. You know, what does the community want to see? If we have to have a solar project, what is that going to look like? Um, so some of the key takeaways we're maintaining the aesthetic character of the community. The rural feel of the community was really important for folks. Um, maintaining baseline soil quality. There is a lot of misinformation that has just deeply penetrated this community related to the toxicity of solar panels. Um, we That was very evident from our meeting and greet series. The ability to farm again afterwards, that was another misconception. Yeah. Um, so we understand and we learned through surveys that maintaining soil quality as it is today on this prime farmland that you have in this county uh, is very important. Um, minimizing the use of prime farmland from the get-go in the siting, another key priority. Uh, and actually a more interesting piece of feedback we got is that right now the project as, it, as Aviation Energy Center, which doesn't have a site but has you know, some components of a renewable energy project like an interconnection agreement that's kind of, you know, not very conceptual. Um, we heard the project is too conceptual as it is. There's not enough information for people to feel like they could give tangible feedback. Um, so, okay. no, what, yeah, I'm gonna add one more thing on here. One other thing that I wanna make sure that's conveyed is we also heard about setbacks. The people are really, they really you guys really wanna see the project set back from the road, set back from from houses, set back from public lands, and we had committed to that. We had we've committed to 300 to 500 foot setbacks from any uh, road, house, public lands, public streams, and we've also committed to having um, the project only face the ha one house on one side. I don't know how to say that less clunkily, but like there there will not be a house where the project is like surrounded by it. So we've committed to that as well. And we're open to hearing other types of setbacks. So I did want to reiterate and have that on the record that we've committed to 300 to 500 foot setbacks from the Little Miami, from any, any, ha any road, any house, any public lands or parks. What do you calculate that that reduces your potential for um, generation and earning? Uh, with aviation, it doesn't because we don't have any technical. So there's nothing right now we could uh, we would just have to acquire more land to make whatever generation possible. 
But I will say you wouldn't have committed to those setbacks if it wasn't possible. Or like those 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 numbers were were flushed out from the people that know uh -huh. that what what's still feasible, and those were well those yeah they were also based on Kingwood's project layout, yeah. um, and it did reduce Kingwood's project layout. I think from I don't quote me on this because the engineering predated my time at the company, but I believe it reduced it by like 25 to 50 megawatts. Uh, with solar, you can also just reduce the efficiency mm -hmm. by placing the panels closer together. Mm -hmm. So it's called like the ground cover ratio. You can have a 40% ground cover ratio instead of what's ideal, which is a 30% ground cover ratio if you're in land constraint. But the Kingwoods were not as strongly set back by right. the, the leases. Is that right? Um, I don't recall them being. It wasn't originally, and then Vesper committed to that. Uh -huh. um, and I believe that was in the application to mm -hmm. the uh, OPSC, but I don't think that was conveyed. That was before we had a dedicated public affairs, mm -hmm. uh, our community affairs team. So I think it kind of got lost, mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, again, carrying that mm -hmm. over. And just back to the meet and greet events. Um, and the idea that right now, like there wasn't the feedback we got is there's not a tangible enough project for people to get feedback aside from these, you know, things we've kind of already talked about and these conversations that we've already had about setbacks and we understand the soil quality and the, the other issues that we've heard time and time again. Um, so what we're doing now is working on writing out our commitments um, and writing them out specifically in a digestible manner so that we can present that to the community and get you know more meaningful feedback and have more meaningful conversations. Um, how we're doing that is we're looking to projects that have been permitted in Ohio who have faced similar scrutiny. Um, Oak Run, for example, is a project in Madison County. That project was permitted. It's the largest in the state. Mm -hmm. um, and they have committed to, they have a stipulation agreement with a few different entities with a mutual stipulation. Um, and it goes into detail about what commitments they're willing to make. So what we've done is essentially we've taken that stipulation agreement and I've done <laughs> a lot of work to run it by every appropriate member on my team, consultants, and the folks that would actually be on the ground doing the work to say, is this feasible? We have to then run our financial models to see once we understand the cost of committing to something like having an environmental this is just an example from the Oak Run case, but having a environmental monitor on site all throughout construction and decommissioning. That's something that they've committed to that we are interested in mimicking. Um, once we understood the cost, we can then model it in our financial models and see if the project is still viable. Um, so that's the work we've been doing, and that's leading to uh, hopefully a written document that outlines what we can commit to. Uh, so that's something, that's what we've done with the feedback that we've got from these meeting degree events. Um, and then another thing that we're rolling out to support open collaboration and feedback gathering is a office hours series. Um, so there will be virtual and in-person offerings for just a time slot every week that you can sign up to meet with us, either virtually or in-person, like I said. Um, and, you know, like you would a professor in college, right? We have an office hours that will be available at that time. Uh, Where's your office? Wherever we'll you want to meet Yeah, <laughs> wherever you want to meet here in my house, I'll get on the video. My <laughs> house, <laughs> <right>. I, <laughs> I will be, I will post up some wherever you would like me to be. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have virtual and in-person offerings with both Lindsay and I to address, I, I think a lot of people also hear misinformation and they're afraid because of the hostility associated with Kingwood to maybe come to a meeting like this and bring up their concerns in a public forum. Um, so we want to have, give people an opportunity to say, hey, I do have questions and I, I want to do, ask you them in a safe way and just to make ourselves more available as resources. Um, so that you'll be able to use like a Calendly, Calendly like app um, yep, on our website to book an appointment. Um, it should be very straightforward. It should be rolling out in the next week or so on our website, and we can share that link with the trustees once it's available. Um, but that will hopefully facilitate more meaningful conversations and collaboration as well. Right. 
Um, but more exciting, at least I think, uh, as, so one of the things in the meet and greet that I was really excited about was we had like a map where people could put stickers on where they want to see a project and they could kind of like list out what features the land might need to have to be considered compatible for solar. Um, so we used that data to find an area along the Clark to Green 138 KV transmission line that might be suitable for solar development that we could actually start potentially leasing land and doing additional diligence. Um, so we found a large swap of land that is in Clark County and Green County. It crosses over the border. Um, and so it would reduce the amount of townships involved in the project to two from three. Um, it would split the counties. It would still be feasible from an economic perspective because it's still along the same transmission line that we have the interconnection agreement along. Um, we've done some desktop diligence. We have software that we run an area, a geo file through, and it tells you, you know, if there's any major red flags like protected species that live in that area or known in that area, um, you know, FEMA floodplains. Uh, to topography data. We've done that early stage diligence and believe there's enough billable acreage to support a project. Um, and it's a large enough area that there's still a lot of flexibility. It's a 10,000 acre area of interest. We would only want to lease up to about 2,000 acres depending on the quality of the land. And to your point about setbacks, we do have to be able to honor those setbacks. So that might mean Using more or less land to make the design fit. Um, but we have found an area, and I can pass around my computer and we can, we can come look at it after. We did not get a chance to print out this presentation ahead of time. We probably all imagine it if you told us the road. Yeah, yeah. they probably can. Yeah. So it's on, um, it's in like the northeastern corner of Miami Township, uh, northeast of Yellow Springs, along, or 68 runs north south, and then 343 mm -hmm. runs east west. And it's in this cross section in the northern northeastern corner. Um, I just scratch the dip by the way, just by the thing that. <laughs> so, no. Um, uh, but where the transmission line is, is southeast part of the township. So there would be a connector, am I right? You'd, you'd need to have a connector of a few miles. So, this area the transmission line runs through within oh. the area of interest. So depending on what 2,000 acres within this area we lease, and there's landowners that want to participate on, um, there might be a small gen tie, but it would be less than a quarter of a mile, which from the development perspective is that not. Yeah, uh, the, the same transmission line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it stays southern. Uh, it yeah. runs, I'll go to that. yeah, it runs diagonally, then it goes north, Okay. Um, and this will be available as well. Okay. I can think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. Um, yeah, and then it goes like uh, west into a substation in Clark County, uh, in Springfield actually. Um, and so we found this massive area that we could whittle down and it's workable. There's actually an opportunity to incorporate not prime farm. Yeah, not prime farmland in there as well. There's an opportunity for to incorporate industrial land. Um, we're in very, very early conversations with the Springfield Airport. They are potentially interested in some type of partnership, not necessarily a land lease, but we have mutual interest in that they would like to develop a microgrid, um, and we are a solar microgrid, um, and we could support that goal. Uh, it would make the name aviation make a little bit more sense. <laughs> 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 um, you whispered but, that. <laughs> it would incorporate, as the area of interest incorporates about uh, 3,500 acres of Miami Township. Um, again, 3,500. Yep. Yeah, we have not, so we've made some what we call like cold calls. We've just picked up the phone and called some landowners to just gauge their interest. And we have actually got some positive responses. Um, so there is seemingly an, a general interest in the area enough that we could begin a land campaign if there is buy-in. Um, it's hard to really know how much 
the hardest part of like developing a project is the land campaign. It is securing the acreage required. And in this community in particular, that's going to be even more challenging given the hostility associated with Kingwood. Did you want to say something? 10,000 acres, potentially 2,000 would be the most that you would need. No. Uh, I, I thought I heard you say it's a 10,000 area acre, uh, acre 10,000 acres area of interest. Yep. And that, I, I may have misunderstood, but I thought you said about 2,000 of that is what you need for your project as you're conceiving it. Did Two. you say something like that? Or yeah, I no, totally. 2,000 acres is what we would release for additional diligence. We cannot do geotechnical studies or ALTA surveys or um, really any environmental studies, so like back monitoring or um, uh, indeed threatened endangered species habitat assessments until we have site control. So we have to have landowner's permission to go out on their land and, mm -hmm. you know, bore for a geotech study. Yeah, I'm not at that level of detail of trying to understand. Well, so that's where the 2,000 acres oh, okay, is where we then, start. Then also, um, oh, that's a start, I'm sorry. Yes. That's not necessarily the it's entire okay. project, but it's a, a project of at least that size in yeah. order to do the technical. It would get smaller. So you start. Oh, it would get smaller. Yep. Okay, well, so then we the start other. with. When, when you said what you said, the thing that confused me as mm -hmm. a completely naive person about it is you then said 3,500 acres of Miami Township. Yeah, so it would make more sense. Which is also, though. is 10,000, is it 3,500, is it 2,000, mm -hmm. is it less than 2,000? 2,000 mm -hmm. acres would be about 250 megawatts in my imagination at 8 acres per megawatt. I mean, that's not maybe the figure you would use, but I'm using that to give myself a ballpark yeah. idea of a possible size of such a project. And I can tell you, it would be, Kingwood, for example, is 1,200 acres as built. That's not, that doesn't mean 1,200 acres has panels over 1,200 acres because there's a fence line, we have uh, buffer space in between the panels. So it ends up being about, uh, I think it's 60% of the least uh, area mm -hmm. that we call the project, like for as facilities cited. Um, I'm sorry, 40% has facilities and 60% remains in between space, fallow. Yeah. Rob, I think what to, to I think what you're saying is the 10,000 acres is the area of interest we're looking at right now that we've identified. 3,500 of that 10,000 is is Miami Township. So that doesn't mean that's going to be like the project at. It's just out of the 10,000 that we've identified as feasible, 3,500 acres of that is in Miami. Okay, but my direction is slightly kitty corner to what you're saying, which is you're talking about a project of more than 50 megawatts. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you are talking about a project of more than 50 megawatts, my imagination at the moment or understanding limited is that that is not a zoning decision that Miami Township would make about their portion of the proposed project, whatever it would be. The reason I suggested that is that I think Miami Township and any other township in the county has authority only over projects that are smaller than 50 megawatts. Yes. So you are sharing with us some ideas yeah. that we as community members may talk with you about and discuss our own enthusiasm or worries, but we don't actually have a vote in the legal sense of who chooses to decide if it's legally okay to be here. So since Senate Bill 52's passage, you do actually have a vote. So each township, I don't want to get into the details because I don't fully understand it, but essentially each township gets to elect somebody to be representative. representative. at the table, an intervener yeah. who can be No, 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 what do you know what's called? Ad hoc. It's an ad hoc. It's an ad hoc member um, to the sliding board. It's like the OPSB, like if yeah. Senate Bill 52 
when you go in front of the, the OPSB to get your permit, the townships, the jurisdiction of where this project's going to be is allocated a voting member. And so they're, they're called an ad hoc, they're called an ad hoc member. And so they, you, you do have a say. So for instance, say this project goes in front of the OPSB and it's part of Miami Township, Clark and uh, Zinia. I'm just going to keep Miami and Zinia. Miami and Zinia would need to pick someone to be their representative for that, for the board. Each and of they, those, each of no, there would be one. One for mm -hmm. any and all townships in Dream County. That's where it gets more. That's where it gets more. Yeah. Okay. Let me do but some when, more. Okay, so I'm and trying to too. I'm trying to grasp these kind of things. And yeah. when you say the word, and, and, and it, it confuses me. It, it, it confuses us too. You yeah. too right? <laughs> the word you said is an ad hoc member. Mm -hmm. I I often don't think of those words used to apply to a voting person. Well, that would be because the, typically it's just the OPS, like the, the Ohio State, the Ohio Power Siding Board has members. So typically before Senate Bill 52, those were the members that would vote on the permitting process. But now the community gets a vote, and that's why they're not they're not they're not standard members, but they're an actor. They're so so an for the purpose of that project, just that project, yes. Since it does affect their area, correct. It yeah. is possible for some person in that mm -hmm. area, what some one person mm -hmm. in that to have a voice in the vote. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a random person. I think it has to be. It has to be like an elected member. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll look at but <laughs> that. That so it has to be actually a county of, of a, an elected official of some kind. I think correct. so. But that's, that that's one correct. person represents more than one township, likely. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And their vote is not the only vote. There's the members of the OPS. Correct. And, yeah. and, and other ad hoc members from other places might be on that meeting. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. No, it's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. The, the like, approval uh, landscape, the, so to speak. Um, and it is different because, so where I'm sitting, right, I've been between which is pre-Senate Bill 52, and Aviation, which is post-Senate Bill 52. So you all are in a similar position, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same process as Kingwood. You have, and every uh, community that has a solar project in the state of Ohio has a lot more authority and say in what project get approved. Um, and I'll leave it at that, but I can follow up with more details on. Um, well, just just when you present it to me as a fairly naive person about it, mm -hmm. you see how I might be confused mm -hmm. as to whether yeah. Yeah. I or some representative whom I interact with yeah. would or would not have some opportunity to express their interest or yeah. concern. Mm -hmm. And uh, There's I can imagine other citizens being as befuddled as I am about it. And I do want to also, you know, the whole, we have not filed a permit application with OPSB, and we do not intend to until we have, well, we couldn't even if we want to until we had a more put together project. Yeah. We are here doing a slow delivery to meetings yeah. like this to get your feedback in earnest. Um, and that extends to, you know, anyone in this community who has, cares about this project and wants to have a say. Right. And of course, that doesn't mean I can make exactly. everybody happy and do everything that everybody wants me to. <laughs> but we're going to try. <laughs> Taking a lot of feedback, and actually, it's been valuable. Mm -hmm. um, there are technical constraints. There are engineering constraints. There's, you know, you know. Um, well, I probably don't know, but I, I can hear what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> and I see. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are outside of my authority, right? But there are a lot of things we can control, and ways we can make a project happen that do meet the very clear priorities that the, you know, the subsection of the community that came to our meetings <laughs> have shared with us. And understanding that that is just a subsection of the community, we want to continue engaging like this to understand how can we make a project that at least gets most of the people's needs met. Mm -hmm. And so this the Township of Miami can benefit because there are benefits. Mm -hmm. They've been proven in other communities. So, you know, we know that people here want, some portion of people here want this project. We did surveys after Kingwood and we know uh, that I think it's 60% of the, I, I can't speak on that because I'm not sure. It was more than half 
of the people who participated in this survey by a third party in Greene County supported solar. Doesn't mean it's perfect anymore. Or just solar in general. Project, right. Solar in general. But mm -hmm. that's why we haven't just packed up our bags and left, yeah. right? There's an opportunity here, and we're trying to make it happen. Um, for, we're not a nonprofit company. We are, you know, a for-profit energy company. But I'm here because of the resilience, environmental resilience benefits of renewable energy, the environmental benefits of renewable energy. Um, and for you all, it's exciting for the community economic benefits and hopefully for the environmental side as well. But, um, yeah. I have a question on something you mentioned earlier. You talked about land coverage ratio typically being 30%. Ground cover ratio. Mm -hmm. Ground cover. Um, that you made some reference that, you, that, that it could be 40%. Mm -hmm. um, I've read, I don't know where, uh, where the project is, but I've read that in, in central Ohio, one of these really large, it might be this one you referred to, mm -hmm. Oak, Oak Run, uh, that a portion of it has agrivoltaic. Yes. Mm -hmm. What would the coverage ratio be on that? I have no idea. That's so the ground cover ratio is typically just referring to the space between the panels. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you're asking though is more like how much of the project area takes that would that would take up. Yeah, what you're asking. Yeah. yeah. I know for a different project at Savion, um, what's it called? It's the it's it's the one it's the other one in Madison County that Savion is working with on um, OSU extension. They're doing they're currently doing a a test case on with using agrivoltaics. They have um, a DOE grant. No, um, regardless, they're using uh, I think eighty acres mm -hmm. of. I want to say 2,000 or 1,600, mm -hmm. um, just because the agrivoltaics hasn't, they're doing vegetable growing. They're, well, they're actually doing a lot of different things. It's like a four-part thesis on agrivoltaics. They're doing like, how can they use AI to, it's very easy, I shouldn't be speaking about it. <laughs> but um, it's very interesting. They are using only 80 acres. So mm -hmm. probably, you know, 5% of the project area, that's a really rough guess, I don't, well, I don't want to spend a lot of no, our meeting time question. on this, but I'm interested in... Yeah, and I can, so we actually have been in touch with OSU a good mm -hmm. amount, and as of late, we're trying to figure out ways that we can, you know, help spread the research that they're doing. Uh, it's super interesting, though, if you go to OSU's website, it's just OSU Extension, and if you write, like, DOE grant, you can, you'll find it. They're doing really cool stuff. Yeah, and I can share some more information after the meeting. I want to go back to what Fred really quick. Um, I do want to let you know that you can have your voice heard other ways as well. There's you can submit a letter to the OPSB, which they do take into account. We saw last case, last case. They look at those letters. So there's other ways to get your voice heard and your opinions heard um, for this for this new project. So um, if you happy to answer that and give you and talk more about that at length, I just want to make sure that you know there are ways that you can you can speak to you can get your voice heard and get your opinions out there. And I do want to circle back to the area of interest. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, happy to stick around and show folks the map in greater detail. Um, but it is, just reiterating, it's a 10,000 acre area of interest. So meaning we've, we're starting with the funnel, right? We have to start big and then we're going to narrow it down. So we're not at the point where we're ready to start leasing land. Um, we would need to whittle the area down a bit more. Um, that could be done by like just calling and seeing where there's an interest, but that's not the most efficient way to do it. And it's kind of just like, just doesn't align with our priorities Rockable. here, which are to engage the community and find out where it makes the most sense. Um, so we're gonna be making calls. You might hear, you know, some landowners talking if you are connected mm -hmm. in that part of the community, um, but we don't intend to start leasing immediately. Um, and we do hope that we can get some feedback on where within this area of interest does it make sense. And we're still open to other suggestions of like, hey, no, that area, we missed this big thing in that area of interest, can't put it there for this reason. We're still open to that feedback. This is just 
a starting point to get to that concern of, hey, we don't have anything tangible right now as a community to provide feedback on. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to give you something more tangible that we can start having more meaning convers meaningful conversations about. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to call out that, I think I said this already, but there are fewer residents in this area as well compared to the Kingwood site. Um, so from you know the aesthetic and rural, uh, maintaining the rural character of the area, I think it would be more suitable. Um, I already said there's an opportunity to incorporate non-prime farmlands in this area. Um, there's a lot of farmland and prime farmland in this area, so it's minimal, but it's, <laughs> it's there. Some of the limited not prime farmland in the area does happen to fall in this AOI. Um, and there's already an industrialized area in Clark County, the airport area. Um, and then, just to reiterate, we're seeking to lease 2,000 acres to within the area of interest to lease for further diligence. Um, only about 1,000 acres, give or take, depending on the constraints, depending on the setbacks, depending on uh, the underlying topography, um, only about 1,000 acres would be an actual project facility um, within the fence, so to speak, or what we call it. Um, and then, I, I think we already covered this, just we've uh, oh, also we're looking into ways that we understand there's a lot of prime farmland here, so how can we, if we can't, you know, we, there's, we're not going to have a project that's cited on 100% not prime farmland, it's just impossible, there's going to have to be some prime farmland used, so how can we offset that impact? Mm -hmm. Is that investing in agricultural preservation in another part of the county? So we have been um, engaging more frequently to come to land trust to figure out how else can we show our commitment to the preservation of agricultural lands. Um, and we're open to other feedback on other ways that you guys think that's possible too. And just finally, I do want to re-review the benefits of, um, of solar. Um, Lindsay, do you want to take the social benefit? Sure, yeah. So um, I'm not going to go into the big spiel, but I will say that we've, um, we've been doing some, while we were doing this research, we did a tally on our community giving program just over this past year, and we've given over $49,000 to this community over just over the past year, um, and we continue. We plan to continue to do that. That's a big part of um, of our of our our mission here. Is you know we we, don't, we want to be good neighbors. We want to make sure that we're providing um, grants and opportunities for organizations organizations that, that deserve them. Were you say something now? Oh no, I was just. You could mention some of the people you've done. Oh yeah, okay. So I could, yeah, yeah, they're right here, sorry. Um, so we've given over 15,000, we've given, sorry, not over, we've given $15,000 to Camp Clifton for H Camp and that, those funds are have gone towards getting, redoing their septic system and they're in the preserving, the redoing their nature center. So now that they have a septic system, they can have campers, which is, you know, it's not pretty, but it's important. Um, additionally, we've given um, over, I think we're at like 20, well, we, we just now, well, we counted 25K. Um, so just this past year, we've given 15,000 to, um, to the High State Park Foundation, which has resulted in water refilling stations at John Bryan State Park. If any of you have been there, they even have cute little doggy, a doggy water fountain under there, so your dogs can benefit as well. <laughs> And they're currently re rebuilding a bird watching station at Caesar Creek, and we paid for that. Um, Glen Helen, we've given about $1,500 to so far. We've given money to um, the, the food bank, the Enzina. We've given uh, money to the Family Promise of Green County, to the Antioch School, World House Choir, um, little, the, little, the, little, the Little Theater downtown. We just gave a $2,000 grant to. Um, and the most exciting, I think, a very exciting part of this is we just gave $5,000 to the Yellow Springs um, Community Foundation's General Guaranteed, Guaranteed Equity um, Fund. We, Why is equity? Yes, Why is that Equity? And we actually just met with them and had, had a really good conversation about continuing that partnership in some way. Um, yeah, so we're excited. We're, we're showing that these, these grants are no strings attached. You know, there's nothing, we're not asking for anything back from these. It's just our way to show you that we are committed to this community and we're committed to being good neighbors. I know that, um, like, this money is, I mean, this is going to continue every every quarter we give out money. So this number is going to keep growing. So I just want to make sure that that's understood, that this is something that we're doing 
free and clear mm -hmm. something we want to do, and we will, or we will continue to do. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, last time we met, you mentioned battery storage was probably going to be part. Do you guys know battery storage will be part of the? Um, we don't know yet. It again it depends on like site control, the community's openness to energy storage. Um, there's a lot of like education that we would want to get ahead of before we even propose that idea just because it is confusing. Um, and then, um, and then sorry, just not to interrupt you, but we would also have to, right now our interconnection agreement does not contemplate battery storage. Okay. So there would be like an additional approval process through PJM as well. And then you said we could, we'd be going from three townships to two. Sounds like it's possible that you would cut out the Z and Cedarville aspect of it, and yeah. then we would be one, and then right across, we're, you're within one, that other 6,500 acres would all be in one township. Yeah, Green, Green Township. Green Township. Yeah, but it could be the case that, you know, only landowners in Miami yeah, want to participate, or, you know, so, you know, so vice versa. Yeah. yeah, vice versa, yeah. And um, speaking of funds, I think what, one of the aspects of them presenting to us is that Keenwood didn't pass largely because of the opposition by local governments, basically. So, though we don't are part of the permitting process, our opposition was an important factor. So, um, and if that comes around again, I, I don't remember at the time when we did that we had that we had a real handle on what our. Um, what taxes we would collect right. from that. So yeah, I don't I need to know now, but that would be, you know, something to weigh. I do have a bit more information on that. Yeah. Um, it's not ever set, it's not set so until you have a lease area and then the engineering because of the taxing um, liability would depend on the specific parcels in the jurisdiction they fall in. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be prorated according to the actual parcels that were included in the project. Um, but I will just get to that in one moment. And I actually think I skipped the entire slide. Um, so I'm just gonna, it's still community benefits, but I just quickly want to touch on that, the economic benefits that are projected from this project. Uh, so the pilot program in Ohio is a $7,000 per megawatt minimum. Um, if someone's good at mental math, $7,000 times uh, 100, uh, no, sorry, $7,000 times, a, yeah, however many, megawatts we can site up to 175 megawatts. Um, that's estimated $1.25 million annually in the participating counties. Um, and then, taxes? yeah, that's revenue. Or in lieu of tax. Revenue for VESPA? No, for no, you. No, so tax revenue. Pilot. So it's a payment in lieu of taxes. Ah. Um, and it's required in Ohio. Payment in lieu of taxes. Yes. Pilot. Okay. Yep. Um, sorry, I use that term a lot, I forget it's not that well known. Um, so yeah, it's a payment in lieu of taxes. So the benefit there is we don't pay property tax dependent on the value of the assets on the property. It's good for the participating counties because it gives you um, a steady income over the life of projects so over 50 years mm -hmm. instead of the asset depreciating and then your tax revenue depreciating, mm -hmm. you get a set value and for us it gives us more predictable in our financial modeling mm -hmm. and it's um, slightly lower in the front end for us. Slightly higher in the back end but then it's even for everybody and it makes a lot more sense. Could you, re so could you, re could you repeat the dollar amount again please? Uh, it's estimated at 1.25 million annually um, for the participating county. So if it was in Clark and Green it would get divided depending on the on the area. Yeah. So that, that would be counties and school districts and townships. Yeah. 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 Thank you. What were you going to ask? Uh, how the depreciation looks for Vesper. So, does that, so fit, are you saying the panels are good for 50 years on the project? Yeah. Or that there's a re, re up? In so, the usually there's a repowering. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not necessarily a repowering, but usually. At year 30, you make a decision whether you want to decommission or continue the project. You could continue the project without repowering, so without replacing the facilities, and just operate at a lower efficiency. Mm -hmm. Or you could uh, replace maybe some of the panels. It's not 
as I understand, it's not usually all of the panels. Um, you're also talking about 50 years, or you're talking about 30 years of technology could have changed very oh, much yeah, in those totally. 30 years. Mm -hmm. yep. so. But my question is, so I'm a little bit late on this part. That's okay. You sell the, the electrodes to AES? Not necessarily. So uh, any utility could buy the power, any utility that has a transmission uh -huh. infrastructure locally. Um, but who is the customer that you guys have we, lined up? We don't have a customer lined up. Oh. Um, you don't. Yeah, typically we wouldn't have a customer, like so for Kingwood we had a customer and then we had to essentially sell them energy from a different project because Kingwood didn't get permitted. Got it. Um, so with a utility though, um, we probably wouldn't, you know, we'd have to go a little bit further into the permitting process before we even like so, start marketing. So by the time it's, you're at the end of the state, you're ready to break ground, the end the buyer of the, the power yep. is, is on Yeah, the so at back. financing essentially, Got once it. we, close on financing right before, it's about the same time you want to have your, what we call an off taker lined up. Um, and that's in like late stage development. So no construction would start if you didn't have an off taker. Okay, you so my last right. of this random series of questions. No, this is great. A couple of years down, you guys have taken that depreciation. Do you sell? Sell the project? Uh, no, not necessarily because, so what I meant with the tax depreciation is that our tax liability would be yeah, yeah, lower yeah. over time, yep. um, but that doesn't like so the project has a guaranteed income for the what's called PPA term. Uh -huh. So if it was say AES, right? They they're buying the energy that's produced from our project for anywhere from like twelve to fifteen years, depending on what's negotiated in the contract. Yeah. So we have a set revenue stream for that amount of time. So it's pretty atypical for a project to be. Um, I guess anything possible, but it's usually a project that be sold. It's sold like either right after construction, yeah. and then we would maintain an operations contract and sell it to the utility because they want to be the owner. For like, um, there's a lot of different reasons they want to be owners, but typically utilities like to own projects. Um, but that's not always the case. It really depends. And then, is there any Garrett? Okay, so if it sold, this still the agreement for the for the. the town, it will not affect the township at all. Yep. The money, the revenue yeah. coming into the county will stay the same throughout the entire project yeah. life because of this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Same, same thing. If mm -hmm. there's a an agreement in there about restoring the land at the mm -hmm. end of the contract, and it's sold to somebody else, will that that will be an agreement? Help. To restore the land and the money available to do that at the end of the project, will that agreement survive that sale? Yes. So every lease agreement has a decommissioning bond language for in it. Um, so the money would be set aside from day one. Regardless of who owns it at the end of it, that money will still be there and will be used for that reason. And Ohio actually has a pretty high um, threshold for that. So there's going to be plenty of money to. to, to fix the land or to bring it back to how it was. And that's gonna, that's gonna be separate from anything else that happens. That's gonna just be there. But I would call that to be a difficult uh, piece for the public to understand yep. with Cambridge, Agreed. which is, uh, well, who's even gonna be around 30 years from yep. now to take you or take whoever yep. owns it mm -hmm. to say, okay, we want it back. We want that land yep. in corn or soybeans. Who's the, the, the question was, who's going to be around and how will they enforce yeah. such, such a contract? Mm -hmm. And that's what the question was about. Yeah. That I was, that she, that we were beginning to focus on. Just yeah. that needs to survive such of a course. sale. Absolutely. And that, we understand that that's a priority. And, yeah, you know, it's. It would be a priority in, in green capital. It's common in every real estate agreement. But I don't think it's well understood when these oh, discussions. Okay. Occur, yeah, and then someone says, "Yeah, but you might sell it," and then suddenly, of course, you start wondering. Yep. Wait a minute. You know, is is this agreement that we thought was in place going to drop away? Yeah, and I'm or not. Are those monies going to disappear? Is somebody going to go bankrupt and say, "Well, we don't have money yeah. anymore to do that"? That's that's a that's a concern, but that's what the bond's for. The bond, it's very, it's. I'm just saying that that kind of point needs to. Mm -hmm. Be mentioned right along with yes, mm -hmm. it could in rare instances this contract could be sold to mm -hmm. somebody else, mm -hmm. and the agreement will still be there. Mm -hmm. It will survive that sale. Yeah, no, I 
Agreed. Because uh, you see a lot of this, you know, at least in the news, in some people's mind, is somebody bought, some big company bought this smaller company, and then they took out a lot of debt on it, mm -hmm. and the company yep. was bankrupt, and the big company didn't have to deal with the bankruptcy. And unfortunately, that's what happened in the coal industry, right? You hear about coal mines being abandoned, mm -hmm. and exactly. um, there was no regulation on coal mines, for example, to have any sort of decommissioning right. bonds in place. So okay. we are in a different like atmosphere today, mm -hmm. um, but I do think we could create better marketing materials. So the, the state has regulated these they have. bonds. Yeah, and yeah. OPSB yeah. part of like the permit application mm -hmm. is uh, related to decommissioning. You have to have decommissioning plan. Um, I there's an amount too. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a set amount you have exactly. to put us like we, you have to be bonded for. for for the project, I I probably for the whole project or something. That has to be set aside for, and the things we have, we're forgetting is, we have to like, we have to get, a, a third party will be, will be this, the bond agent, it won't be us, it'll be like an insurance yeah. company too, so that's, that's not. That's what I was gonna say before, I was like, yeah. I'm not an expert on bonds, but it's not like we are putting the money in our bank account and saying, yeah, this is for you. No, we have no, we have no control over <laughs> somebody else. Well, that's, that's a kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's of a course. kind of diverse, the vision of mm -hmm. purpose that needs to be clear, I think, to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's going to be a number of people that will, again, question that. Yeah. I, I had two more questions if it's okay, but I, I, I'm going for me. Let's, mm -hmm. maybe somebody I have to ask, of more. did you have specific other things on your list? Yeah, I just have a couple of more benefits that I'd like to run okay. through, too. Because I, yeah. address On okay. the one hand, this is really important, on the other yeah. hand, so uh, you have more business. I'll just go through these last um, ones quickly if that's okay. Yeah, and then you could repeat what you said about office hours, oh, yeah. Yeah. communication. Mm -hmm. So, Fred, I mean, these are important questions, but yeah, well, maybe I'm you need sorry. to ask them later. I, I, spoke you don't have to I apologize will, at all. I can also, Good. I will stick around for the whole meeting. So if you would just yeah. We can be here too. Um, so just real quick, the pilot program, uh, $7,000 per megawatt, there's an additional $2,000 that the county can also request. I don't know why they wouldn't, but so we should say 9,000, but to be uh, conservative, we always just say 7,000. Um, there's also uh, over $2 million expected in landowner payments for the participating yeah. landowners, yep, annually. Um, over 100 construction jobs, uh, we have a regional business partnership program that we utilize to incentivize the hiring of local businesses. So at any point, a uh, local business can go to our website, our regional business partnership page, and fill out their information. We provide that information to our EPC, our engineering procurement and construction contractors, and we require that they hire preferentially from that list. Um, on the environmental side, solar, protects the land and water. Solar is a temporary land use. Um, it uses almost no water during operations. It is non-toxic. It creates no pollution. Um, Post-operations panels can be recycled in the land and be restored to its original condition. We are working on more marketing materials to help in a plan. Yeah, and more detailed uh, plans about our commitments. Um, but we hear this misinformation all the time. Um, habitat restoration. Solar facilities act as um, habitat for native plant species, native pollinator species, insect populations, and in turn, bird species. Um, and we are committed to revegetating our arrays with native plant species to support pollinator uh, habitat. Um, Can I ask real quick before we yeah. get further into pollinators and other things, but I just was wondering, uh, do you have um, scientific, independent, peer-reviewed mm -hmm. studies yeah. that, that yes. prove without a shadow of yeah. a doubt that 30 years from today, the, the, the land underneath these panels that is now, the panels have been removed, is in exactly the same growing potential as it is so one of the things we, in Oak Run, for example, that we can commit to, mm -hmm. um, in short, yes, there is third-party unbiased research to support every claim mm -hmm. in this presentation today. <laughs> um, I have a resources slide, actually, that I can, we can build into a document that we can share. It's a messy slide, so it wouldn't help to share it with you all the time. But anyway, um, uh, 
Yeah. It seems so much the opposition is, is, is environmental. That it, the panels release all this toxic right. oh, stuff right. into yeah. the into the aquifers, and um, they're just not toxic. They are. But really do you have toxic. absolute proof of yes. this through so I can share the scientific data work? Yes. So every solar panel panel manufacturer releases safety data sheets. It tells you all of the components in the solar panels and. The EPA guarantees they're not toxic. So one of the commitments we're willing to make through the that we've identified through the Oprah stipulation is soil quality testing. A baseline test, a test at 35 years, and a test at 40 years. Um, this is something that you will see come out in writing once we've gone through the remaining diligence, but I have gotten like initial go-ahead from all of the appropriate teams that we can do this. Mm -hmm. um, because none of the panels are toxic. So you can make a commitment like that because we do, uh, uh, what's it called? We do an environmental site assessment uh, when we're releasing this land. So we know the baseline condition of the soil. We have our ESA. We'll do a phase two ESA, environmental site assessment, if need be. Um, and then we're willing to commit to soil testing, like I said. Um, and again, this will come out in writing. Um, the other piece is, in the Oak Run that we're looking to mimic, is a commitment to proving the panels are non-toxic through the EPA's, um, they do a toxicity report. That is, every project has a, every panel has a toxicity report and a safety, panel, a safety data sheet. Solar panel safety data sheet is not solid. <laughs> um, so I can provide you samples of those from the Bovia panels that we used on one of our recent projects. Um, and you can read it for yourself and, I just wonder how can there be so much opposition to solar based on the environmental destruction that's going to happen with the panels where on your end of it you're basically saying it's just you know it's just it's absolutely just, guaranteed that there's no no effect whatsoever. Because there's a political component mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, and, I and there's a lot of misinformation that came out. Okay. If Possibly. you knew how much money the oil and gas industry spends on spreading that misinformation, <laughs> there's a lot. It's in Ohio alone. It's, <laughs> it's not like somebody just fell down a rabbit hole one day. Like there's a reason people believe this. It's that there's been an intentional effort to get people to believe this that's been very well funded, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate because it. And also, it's, it's new. It's a new. It's a new technology. You know, it's always. It's not really new. Well, no, but it, it is for like for this. Year, for, it is for like the every person. It is. They don't. It's get your yeah. you know, get your power from a solar panel. is a new idea, like in general. And I think that's it used to be it toxic, too. and did it used to off gas, and did it used to kill the birds that no. you know, fly over, and did it no. used to do all these bad things? No, no. There's no. no. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no and they've never torn up and uh, scraped all the land clean. And a lot. I mean, there I, are, I, I, there are, there are bad actors in every. Let, let, let me interrupt. Yes. Did either of you want to say anything, Scott? You you made a face and <laughs> almost. <laughs> All I want to say is that my whole interest in this topic has been that I, I want to advocate for the township trustees making an informed decision through scientific research and, and, and an open process. That's, that's, that's all I'm asking. That's <laughs> all we would ask. Are you, is, are, are, do you agree with the general statement that I certainly no do. And having listened to a lot of, I've been to a lot of the meetings, you know, one time one of the persons who's objecting is talking about environmental stuff that's coming off the, the panels. The next time they're talking about how it's going to hurt my home prices. The next time they're talking about noise. Or they're about so it's like they just throw stuff against the wall, see if they can get any of the stick. And that's, that's what runs me is that. I, I think 200 people basically got themselves characterized as massive, overwhelming opposition mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to the Kingwood project, and the power siding board apparently didn't make any attempt to look at the, I mean, the, the scientific not. facts. Mm -hmm. They just said, oh, okay. Well, they, they did look at the scientific effects and they did determine that they weren't going to dismiss or um, it was tightened down. down. Yeah. Where they weren't going to turn it down based on environmental factors, but only on public opposition. Right. Uh, 
I'll just do, one. Do you want to say anything? I, I'll say that um, I am not an ecological scientist, but all the reading that I have done has supported everything that you've heard here. So that leads me, not to mention our warming plant, and which are the two things that have uh, driven me to become more active. Um, we have lots of evidence that we need to move to renewables sooner rather than later. And all the research that I have done says that solar will be good for the land and good for the water. We can reduce our production of soybeans for uh, biofuels and corn for ethanol and instead make solar, which is, as far as I can tell, farming by harvesting sunlight with very little noise, very little glare, very little water use, no pesticides, hardly, I don't think there are pesticides, no um, nutrients flowing into the water and making algae. It just looks like such a big win to me. And I will just add, I have a master's in urban resilience and sustainability. It's a master of the environment degree. I did not get into the solar industry or the renewable energy industry for the pay. I did not get into it because it's easy or because I love traveling. I, similar to Kate, have uh, an environmental undergraduate degree as well in a global health undergraduate degree. And that's really what I'm passionate about is uh, maintaining a environment that I can raise children in yeah. and that will look somewhat similar to what I grew up in, which is like a farm town like this. Me too. Um, and I do think it's important just to highlight what pass the passive income can do for farmers. Um, the landowners who participate have economic stability that protects them against the volatility of markets. So, you know, the landowners that participated in Kingwood did so voluntarily. Nobody twisted their arm. They chose to participate because they saw it as a way to offset the costs of farming. And preserve their farm. And exactly, preserve their farm for future generations. The last bit that I don't think we've spent enough time talking about, and I encourage everybody to look more into, is the benefits just from our energy perspective. Um, grid resilience and reliability. I know we all take it for granted. I did before I was in this industry, but when not everywhere you go, you can flip a light switch and lights turn on. Navajo Nation is a beautiful example. Uh, maybe it's not beautiful, it's a sad example of that reality. Um, solar helps diversify generation portfolios for regions, and that helps create uh, stability on the grid. Solar provides ancillary services to the electrical grid in like balancing and frequencies. Um, in the event of a grid disturbance or a shutdown, it can act as a local power supply uh, because it is a decentralized asset. Um, I know that's a lot of information and it is complex. I encourage you to just do a little bit of research. I do have some links I can send to people. Um, additionally, if you care about like energy independence and national security, I encourage you to do some research on the benefits of renewable energy in enhancing um, or reducing our reliance on foreign fuels and supporting the U.S. economy and national security. Um, solar is the cheapest form of energy. Again, that's Googleable. Just make sure you're using credible sources, please. Um, and I'll just say again, solar enables the transition away from fossil fuels, which have historically placed a disproportionate health burden on marginalized communities. Again, living in a beautiful place like Miami Township, it is easy to forget that there are communities that every day and for multiple generations have dealt with the health effects of the fossil fuel industry. I lived in Denver, or I lived in Boulder actually, but I've worked in Denver, and if you go to Globeville, it's adjacent to the Cherokee National Gas Plant from Excel. Cancer rates are higher, infant deaths are higher, there's a real negative impact of the fossil fuel industry, and just because it isn't in your backyard, and you're still using the power that those are creating when you click on your light switch right now. And you're still breathing air that has mm -hmm. tiny particles in it that can hurt you. Exactly. Have you ever heard of a, a large-scale solar farm being uh, built anywhere that there isn't a transmission line? Um, 
There's been a few that have moved that's not as close. Well, but so I've heard of yeah. a transmission. So I worked for Invenergy previously, which is a much the largest developer in the US. Mm -hmm. I worked on a transmission team. We would build transmission to unlock renewables in places where you couldn't otherwise. It's called like merchant transmission. So there is a growing, all of our transmission infrastructure in the United States is over 50 years old. So if you start looking into grid resilience and reliability and the benefits of solar um, and just renewables in general, every time a project comes online, you have to pay for the upgrades to the transmission system that enable that power. So the burden of improving our grid system has fallen on renewable yeah. energy developers. The same rules do not apply to oil and gas industry. They've been grandfathered into old legislate or old rules. They are not carrying that burden. The renewable energy industry and utilities and ratepayers like you all are paying for our outdated systems to be improved. Um, so it's just another shout out for grid resilience and reliability. Um, and a long but way you of saying have a no. Really <laughs> result of the coal industry, right? Uh, that's what. Yeah, we're not trying yet. Generating electricity right. for the last. Exactly, and there's and that there's value in that, and that happened. Right. Yes, but this is we're not saying that we're gonna that it's time to replace everyone. It's not time. We know it's gonna take a while, and it's not something where it's either or. You know, this is this is an effort to, to add to the, the the power that the coal is already already producing, and that way, in 50 years from now, our our grandkids, our kids, will be able to have a more resilient grid because we've made those repairs to get solar on the long line now. Because at the end of the day, coal is finite. That. There isn't an unlimited, I mean, there is, but there isn't. You know, it's, so one of these days it's gonna run out, cold. And so I think that that's, the way we're looking at it is this is something that we can, this is an investment into the future now. Where, yes, I grew up in Jackson, Ohio. My, my grandfather died in mesothelioma. He was a coal miner. I was West Virginia. I'm, I'm all about, I know coal, and I know that that's part of, you know, it's, it's more than just energy, you know? It has been part of people's lives for 100 years, you know? And I get that, but, now is the time to make those make these changes where we can start doing both and where it can kind of become part of where solar becomes part of this conversation uh, th as well. Th this, is, really this is important stuff. It's way why we're sticking so we're, we're getting into the big picture. <laughs> uh, well, we want to be system thinkers here in this area, right? Yes. I know you all are. Um, but for this meeting, <laughs> um, we have one. the biggest takeaway we're here. Uh, is that you're <laughs> you're here? You're reporting, <laughs> and you were going to leave us with okay. links, contact, and contacts. Uh, and we're here, and we're going to want to work with you to get this project made and to work to make sure that it's a project that everyone in this community can be. The, big, the biggest proud. thing I've heard is that you're looking at a new area that yeah. is mm -hmm. on the transmission line, yeah. uh, and it. Still involves Miami Township. It does still involve Miami Township. But I appreciate everybody's question. <laughs> what a productive dialogue. Mm -hmm. I think you have another question. I just wanted to speak to that whole reason the proximity to the transmission line. It's just about line loss, so the longer that those electrons oh, have to travel. That too. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. But feed them on the they're, highway. They're not gonna make a fortune if they don't have transmission lines, you know, yeah. within a certain yeah. short amount of yeah. distance. Yeah. But we're saying this area does. Like we can with oh, it. Yeah. But it's not just um, well, the I, project would become not viable, not because we don't make the fortune, fortune, because nobody will buy it. I have the, the more mundane responsibility of getting the more items of business. Sorry, okay. We're done. Thank you all. Yeah, but we should this is why we didn't look at this early. It's why we have office hours. We can have these conversations weekly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. What's that business done? Let's let's move on. I've, um, this has been. Uh, I won't say what I was doing in 1980. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll tell you later. What are you running for Congress? On Solar America platform. Yeah, yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. um, I do think we need to move on. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds great. Uh, that is for this meeting. And the two items that we made, one. well, Yale Springs Development Corporation, but also uh, the 
the any program. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to Corey. Yeah. Okay, I'm fairly brief, so it's been a while since I've been here. I see Marilyn and I never see you, Chris. Occasionally I run into Don, but um, you sent a request for a few documents, financial documents. Lisa's handling those through a records request, so most of those are available. A couple of them aren't. They would have to be special, um, specially put together, which I don't think that we're going to be able to do. But speaking to sort of the spirit of what you were asking for, I, I think I understood it as a, what have you been up to? Um, where, you know, are, is this work actually being done that's of benefit that kicks back to Miami Township? And is there oversight and are you being audited? Well, I made some specific requests that some of those included that and, and I don't think they were too overly broad. I think every request could be could be uh, answered yeah. in a short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to just say, well, if you can't put it together, then I just won't even ask for it. I won't even consider. Oh, no, no, no. She's she's putting them together okay. to bring to your next meeting. Okay. Which is Great. The fifth, I think. Um, yes. Yes. No, it sounds right. According to the agenda. Okay. Okay, well then I'll, I'll wait for her. Okay. okay. Um, so I put, I did create like a little timeline, if that's useful, that shows kind of where we started, where Please. we've been. Okay. I don't think we stated for the people in that is. Oh, like. So they're from Wise Lale Springs Development Corporation, and this concerns their Co request. Corey and Marilyn, previously it was Corey and myself, uh, and one of the founders of YSDC was Chris, am I right? Yes. Um, and what's before us is the request uh, to share in the cost of a contract manager, executive director of YSDC. Um, and people may have noticed yeah, so uh, I, I put accounts of the yeah. um, village council meeting asked a lot of the same questions that Chris has asked, yep. so the discussion is ongoing. And that was our, our big discussion at the July meeting. So mm -hmm. I kind of put the YSCC in the context of, I, I just popped it in the context of community resources, which was that um, group organization before I moved back here. Um, so the YSTC was formed in, I said 2019, and then I saw another document that said 2020. I would go with 2020. Great. I'll fix it. So I came in in April 2020. Um, I'm sitting in one of the two township seats. The reason we can't have two township trustees in the designated seats is because it would be uh, an official township meeting. So um, I shared with Marilyn the uh, side. I'm I was I'm about ready to cycle off this board. I think I'm just kind of shifting my schedule a little bit. And so if you guys want to just think about who you want to designate for that spot coming up, not it's not on fire. Um, I'm just changing my schedule. I got to keep going into the senior year, so I have other things that I want to prioritize right now. Um, so I was the president 2022 and for the second half of 2023 um, I passed it over to uh, Dino at the beginning of 23 and then Dino resigned ahead of what may have been a conflict of interest and then sort of blew up anyway or fell apart I guess anyway with a real estate transaction because his wife is a realtor. So um, and then right now I'm the treasurer of the organization. So 2020, um, you know, the way that it was presented to me is that in, if you look at number four, it's kind of like shifting ties, right? Like the, um, the CBE started to uh, become a little rocky, they lost some funding, and then the voters didn't want the village basically to, to make up that funding gap for the CBE, is that correct? This is right when I moved here. And so, then the um, community resources deeded the land of the CBE back to the village, 
and dissolved as an organization. And then um, the village and the township, um, where am I going? So, so then, okay, everybody's separate, then there are these couple of competing levies that came up with the, this fire station, with the schools, um, aging facilities in town that were in front of the voters, and the foundation, the township trustees, and the village recognized a need for the big entities in town to have a platform to coordinate, to align their economic goals, and um, just to have a forum to basically share information on a regular basis and make sure everybody was talking to each other. Is that accurate to how it started? I think there was more emphasis on the actual nuts and bolts of, of development. Mm -hmm. I think there was more of a concern. And, you know, there's, there, there was, up to that point, virtually no economic development in, in the village or the township. And there was an ongoing search for that development, for those, for that additional tax base, for the quality of life that more, you know, that, that yeah. more things can, can bring in. And I think that was more of a driving, uh, in, from my recollection, that was more of a driving interest as opposed to just, you know, sitting around tables and sharing what we'd like to have done and, you know, gosh, wouldn't it be nice? Did that have community resources for 10 years after after uh, Antioch Midwest was built? Uh, at, uh, no benefit to to anybody. I mean, tax wise or um, so. Anyway, um, I, I agree to a certain extent with what you were saying, Corbin. Mm -hmm. I think it was a little more of a driving factor on on hoping to you know get some get some older buildings rehabbed. Uh, maybe, Antioch came to us uh, early uh, with all these empty buildings and, and asked us to, to help uh, market them, and rehab them, or, or do something with them to, to make them viable and mm -hmm. to, 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 help, to help everybody. Uh, I never really heard much of what happened to that. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and then YSDC got into, you know, I don't know how we got into wellness center management and and solar, but I'm sorry I didn't put <laughs> But uh, I don't really see much development and uh, benefit from solar to Miami Valley or to Miami Valley to Miami Township, mm -hmm. uh, or even through the village because it's so passive. Uh, I mean, how much income tax is going to be generated from that? Uh, it's some small amounts of uh, property tax would be would be, but yeah, but you you obviously spend an awful lot of time and resources uh, going you know going that direction. I'd be interested in seeing the amount of time and resources that you've actually put into it. Hopefully, we'll we'll be getting. Okay. But yeah. Let me speak to that a little bit. Okay. So 2020, uh, when I came in in April, um, April 2020 pandemic. Right? Mm -hmm, sure. So we moved to Zoom. This is when everything shut down. The Wellness Center uh, was brought to us as a project. So that summer we spent working on the marketing the fire station, selling the fire station, mm -hmm. which I understand that there was a little bit of contention about who's paying the utility bills and things like that after the fact. Yeah, there was a lot of contention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's disappointing to hear that that wasn't sort of fleshed out in, the, mm -hmm. in how it all was planned, mm -hmm. I would say, ahead of time. Um, so, yeah, they brought us the project to the Wellness Center. It looked like it would be a collaboration, sort of like what was this board made for. And so I think the village put together uh, like a pro forma, profit and loss about wh what it would take to run it. Um, the board talked about what it would take to run it and what is the benefit to the community to get this thing back up and running. Um, and this is sort of something that happened a few times, I would say, in the early days of this board, where a project would come to us, we would run through, put in, say yes, because we want to do stuff, and then put in a bunch of work, and then the thing would sort of dematerialize before our eyes. And then we go, well, that's in a way kind of a relief that it didn't work out, because it was going to be a tremendous amount more work to actually do the thing that we just spent a whole bunch of work trying to figure out what we could do. So um, I would say that that probably happened a few times. Um, 
the solar project. So there was a Department of Energy prize um, the, that's energizing rural communities that came up in 2023. Um, and so it was a grant that, so at that point last year, 2023, we had uh, recognized that we, in order to get more work actually done, um, be a presence at regional planning meetings and um, uh, apply for grants and uh, you know generally kind of push projects forward and then we needed some kind of staff to move things forward. So we got funding from uh, as a Miller Fellow and uh, had Lisa Abel take that role as part-time interim director. So she identified this DOE grant for um, renewable energy projects in rural communities across the country. And applied for that, won it, it's a $100,000 unrestricted cash prize. So it actually can be used for anything we want. Because what it really is, is a prize that says, um, we recognize the work that you've already done. So the DOE doesn't have any ties or particular, you know, there's no restrictions about how we spend it. If we want to rent a bunch of ponies, we pony rent <laughs> if we want. So then the second, so my, uh, I actually had my company pay for me to go out to the NREL in January to go to um, just a, a week long uh, summit that brought all of these other prize winners together to talk about what it might take to win round two of the prize, which is $200,000 unrestricted, which we just applied for this week. Um, and it was really interesting to find out what other rural communities are doing in different kinds of renewable energy projects. Technical was part of it. There were people that were doing um, biodiesel, um, uh, what's it called? Bio Biomass. Thank you. <laughs> Biomass. Um, there was a group out of Minnesota that had uh, this ginormous plan to take all of the fodder left over from feeding corn to cattle for meat and feed that into a big biomass um, biodigester and then out the other end comes a little bit of jet fuel which they were going to sell the Delta. It's very cool, very inspiring, a lot of projects on native land. Um, anyway, that was that was just my thing. I learned an awful lot. Um, and so that brings us into this year. Oh, last summer we also, Antioch finally came around um, after not saying anything for a for these three years, um, finally came to us with a possibility to market and sell those empty buildings. Um, we poured a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money in to get them all appraised. Um, and then that deal did not work out in the way that it was initially presented. So that was um, another swing and a miss, which honestly, that's business, that happens. You try stuff and you have to take a calculated risk about whether or not it's gonna pay off. Sometimes it doesn't. So, um, so essentially we're at this point, there's, we're, there's no longer Miller, Miller Fellow. Um, Lisa's been doing this work on a volunteer basis now for all of this year. And uh, just submitted round two for that next level prize. And you know where we came to last year, last year's treasurer, Ryan Karp, um, he basically identified that there, there's a gap in our funding, right? Where we, you know, we're sort of just barely making it or just a little bit losing money every year. And if nobody ever wants us to get anything done, then that you know we probably shouldn't like we either need money to get stuff done <laughs> and in order to get money we have to say to people like the township and the village, what do you guys want us to do? Give us your priorities and give us a little bit more money so that we can fund a person to push those priorities forward. So that's, that's basically where we are this year is the completion of that plan, which is let's see if we can secure funding in order to hire a person that can push forward these economic goals. So the village um, identified that they would like to have a five-year economic sustainability plan. And the marketing of the village and the township as a place to bring a business, um, you know, we've identified with the Green County, uh, Eric, uh, Henry and the Dayton Development Corporation, 
that Yellow Springs is a very desirable place for people to want to live and do their businesses and build their businesses. And so with the Intel plant going in, in um, near Columbus, and then the Honda battery plant, LG battery plant going in to Washington Courthouse, what we would like to do is, um, and actually what we've been working on this year is marketing materials to go and present to those bigger businesses so that we can try and attract um, a couple of the smaller feeder companies that work with them. So if we get somebody that's maybe got three people on their budget as a consultant or they build you know, a couple of little parts or they do um, cleaning for clean rooms and I don't really understand how batteries are built or uh, chips are made, so those are that's really the best way I can describe any businesses that I can imagine that work there. But um, if we could get a few of those businesses to settle in Yellow Springs, uh, then that's a huge win. And, and that's kind of the opportunity that we've, we've established, is that this is a kind of a generational opportunity with those two businesses being built and all the investments going on in the region. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. What questions do you have? Well, I have a question yeah. um, for Chris, because I, 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 I didn't know a lot of your early involvement, and um, I, I, I saw the list of things you wanted from Corey. Some of them, the first question you asked was a lot about rate of, re, rate of um, um, return on investment. Mm -hmm. And that's a really interesting question, because I don't know, I, I'm on board now, and I have trouble imagining exactly what kind of return the township itself gets. You know, if, 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 we, if we were to land a big, or a big for us, say supplier to Honda or whatever, how does that affect the township? And what was your original vision when you, when you were thinking that being a part of this board, like what avenues, and I guess it talks mostly about money or quality of life, what things did you dream that they could get done that would directly benefit the township? Well, it, the you know what Corey was just speaking of, and, and what you were speaking of, and, you know the whole the you know the rising tide raises all the ships. Uh, it wasn't specific, I, I never thought specifically for Miami Township because I'm real a realist enough to know that virtually virtually anything that would come into this area. And if it was not within the village of Yellow Springs, and it was, let's say, adjacent to the village of Yellow Springs, would be automatically annexed by the village of Yellow Springs because the village would not provide any utilities to a nice little manufacturing operation or whatever that we were talking about with batteries or, or cars or, or whatever. Uh, anybody who came in would be instantly into the village of Yellow Springs. And so all we would get is the same thing we would get now, it would be some some small portion of an increase in property tax. Um, but again, this was for the better meant, for the better good of the whole township, including the incorporated areas. Uh, it's just, I mean, God love them, but we're working on five years, and you're really, to my understanding, from what I've seen or heard, is there just hasn't been a whole lot of return on the investment and that's return for the village of increase in income tax for the for the people who have moved here to do the the, the businesses that we had hoped would come here that we're, i haven't seen any increase in that i haven't seen any increase in the property tax based on um, uh, any new construction that's come in i really haven't seen any increase we talked about the antioch buildings you know that were con you know that might have been converted into something or another and the people who were then in those buildings would either be uh, new residents who would then be paying income tax on what they're making somewhere, you know, that whole, that whole thing. That's return on investment. I, I've just asked to see some of these numbers and hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll be forthcoming. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that the numbers are going to give you that information that you seek or that you hope to find. It's pretty modest, I mean, we have, $4,500 in dues coming through the door, and we spend about $5,000 a year. So you're not going to see, I mean, aside from that impressive $100,000 that we brought in, you know, 
But the, you, our you offer like this are for, for the village of, as part of the Manning Township. You were talking. You're about. asking for us to, to provide. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant the financial statements that you're asking for. Well, well, no, we, that was a different topic, but it's like, how could we measure? How could you measure? Yeah, what would the KPIs be on that? Like, how, how do you measure what impact your group had on the people who have moved to town, the, the mill works and the, the various businesses that have moved to town? I, I don't know how But has that been a, a direct result yeah. of, the, of the YSC? Yeah, those that's what people, saying. did they come to town because of work that's that was it. done by right. YSC? I'm saying return on investment. We've actually made investment. We've invested somewhere in the neighborhood of $60,000 mm -hmm. in YSC. Mm -hmm. right. Has any well, other yeah. organization put in $60,000? Large or small, as the schools. You're I mean, the schools are going to be the biggest uh, recipient of any tax dollar from anybody who comes in to, uh, my, to, to, to the village or a Miami Township yeah. through income tax, et cetera, et cetera. Have they put in uh, $100,000 into, uh, into so the YSTC? So you're saying 60000 or you're saying because it's 2000 a I'm, year. I'm saying 40 seats. plus thousand that we, that we gave YSDC by giving them the opportunity to, to market the firehouse. You know, we went to them and said, here, here's an opportunity for you to get a start, to get some seed money, mm -hmm. to, to get these projects going. This was new into YSDC. This was my idea, so I, I know yeah. how this came about. Yeah. Uh, and so with the commission that they, the 8% of the sale, the, you know, uh, and then we're going to go back to this business of, you know, they did not pay the utilities, they did not pay the service, the surveying cost, they did not pay the, 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 uh, the uh, radon uh, uh, mitigation that was, that was uh, the, uh, the, pro the property owner's responsibility. We were not the property owner. We, 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 the, 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 the title to the firehouse went to YSDC. Mm -hmm. They were the property owner at the time, not, not us. We had transferred property tra title to them. Anyway, that and then the 2000 a year or whatever we've been giving in, in dues and early in the project, I believe they asked us for, for, for $5,000, you know, startup fund, in, you know, over and above uh, other contributions that we made. So my rough calculations are we put in about $60,000 into YSDC since its inception. I just want to know whether if any other individuals or, or political subdivisions or schools or, 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 or any operator has, has put in that kind of money and and they got in their return on investment also. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's, money is a funny thing, right? Because, we, <laughs> we, we, you know, we can play lump sum and, and then we can bucket it in certain ways mm -hmm. and, and achieve different compelling arguments. So, you know, I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. and I'm the treasurer, so uh -huh. I can I can happy to look at what you've requested and, and see what we what that shows, mm -hmm. and also, you know, encourage you guys as an organization to to look and say, what do we want this group to do? But we want to pay our fair share. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to. I, you know, we were elected to be trustees, to be trustees of the of the financial of the fiscal lifeblood of Miami Township, which is, um, you know, like it's money. You know? yeah. and so we have to we have to guard the money of the taxpayers, and we have to spend what we decide to spend for the taxpayers as wisely as we can. Absolutely. And so a project like yours, or like other projects that we're considering on investing in, you know, I think we feel we need to feel comfortable that. Our money is being well spent. It's it's being it's being uh, it's generating whatever the organization is that asked for the money. It's, it's doing that work, and so it's it's benefiting you know the residents of Miami Township. And there are many ways in which this money could have benefited them. But I just you know I just want to feel at some point that we're doing you know we're doing as at least as much as other organizations. In the in the YSDC, mm -hmm. you know, we're not very large. We've got a budget of about a million and change, uh, and what's the village is like? It's like twenty million or, or twelve million, something like that. I, I'm not sure. And yeah. have no idea what the school budget is. It's got to be a thousand million or two million or six hundred million. It's a lot of money. The school is definitely the biggest school yeah. in town. And say. so, you know, 
are, are we making proportional contributions? Is our sixty thousand that we ah, contribute proportional gotcha. to the village, proportional to the to the yeah. school? And now you've come back and want another twenty thousand dollars on top of the sixty. So now we're at eighty thousand. You know, is that where other organizations, other political subdivisions, proportionally to what their income is, is that what they're putting into the, this, the, the, this project that you're asking for? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just asking. Yeah. That's I mean, I, again, I'm going to have to subtract out forty thousand. Okay. Just because of, you know, there was a service that was performed, and whether it was a realtor or an auction house or the YSDC, somebody was going to take, make money off of the service of marketing and selling the building. We would have done it ourselves. Okay. Okay. So it would have come right back to us. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, that was the original plan all along until YSDC came along. And, yeah. You know, we wanted to provide the opportunity for you to mark to you do the marketing to, to get your feet wet on how to you know on how to go through the the real estate because why you know community development corporations uh, a lot of them are major developers they, they take old yeah. buildings or they get new buildings or they put investors together or all those sorts of things that we thought was going to happen and yeah. we thought well here's an opportunity to you know to instead of giving a real estate company, or a, or you know, a commission, a forty thousand dollar commission, uh, it would have been less than that because we were offering YSDC eight percent on the sale, as opposed to a three percent as a seller or a six percent as a as a both end seller and buyer. Uh, we were we offered eight eight percent, which ended up obviously being uh, more than uh, more than a, a realtor would have had. So, you know, I feel like we certainly have done our fair share and what we've, what we've returned on that, that 8%, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen yet. So I'm, I'm asking before we put another $20,000 into this, what we would expect to, to get yeah, as well, a return. Yeah, well, I guess the answer to that is, what are you asking for? What do you want to get? Because um, we increased really- Increased property tax which would be, you know, for the township itself. Increased property taxes in the township. Correct. By? By these businesses, these organizations that, that are going to be coming as a result of the YSDC's efforts. They will be uh, coming into Miami Township, including Village of Yellow Springs, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And I haven't seen them m moving into town in the last four plus years. Yeah. That's what is the return on investment that I'm looking for. And I don't know how you, all I can judge is what's happened. I can't, I can't ask for a five-year plan because I've written enough five-year plans to know that, you know, these are feel-good plans. They're, they're, you know, they're not really based on a whole lot because I, I have no idea what the, the upper echelon of, of Intel is thinking about, you know, coming uh, an hour and 15 minutes to the Village of Yellow Springs uh, that, that's, nowhere, that's nowhere near transmission lines. I mean, transmission that there's not a rail, there's not an interstate that goes through here. Yes, 675 is, you know, is five miles down the road, but it, it, it's, not a, it's not a convenient place. And there's no, there's no, there's no large um, distribution center to, to, to move things around like there is in Springfield. I'm not being a, a grumpy gust here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm, tr I'm trying to justify spending money. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And that's why I asked for, for what I asked for because I didn't, you came to us for twenty for $25,000. You know, we didn't come to you asking, you can give us that issue. So we're kind of hoping that you can justify uh, a return for us to, to make that contribution. Yeah. Let me, let me correct. <clears throat> My memory is not that there was a request for 20000 It was a request for our putting a share in of fifty to 60000 Marilyn made a motion that we give, 60. give ten. Some money towards oh, the towards total. And, and 
I think Lisa's original letter, which I... Yeah, the original letter said 20, but you always oh, gotta ask okay. five. Uh, that I missed. I stand corrected. Um, but we did pass a motion in principle that we would participate, but with no dollar amount, and this is... That's what we're trying to get. Yeah, that's what we're talking about now. Yeah. And Village Council had, according to the article in the paper, had a similar list of what, what's really happening, what are we yep. going to get out of this? Uh, and they were throwing around the number of 40,000 that they would... Yes. And then I asked about proportionality, like what's the village budget, what's our budget. Um, what about the school? And I'm not sure the school's allowed to. I don't think they out. are. They're going to be the big, biggest recipient of. of but that's weird. Good. Like biggest. you said, a rising, a rising tide lifts all I mean, ships. I mean, if if we. But reduce, you're looking for operating expenses to make that tide go up. Yes. Yeah. But if it's lowering the tax burden for so, everybody because we have more people, more businesses here then the school's levy gets smaller, then your levy gets smaller, then the burden on the taxpayers gets smaller. So the list of things that, I mean, Chris had a detailed list uh, that, that I don't feel the need for uh, it to be as thorough as you asked, but uh, we haven't gotten it. So, and you, you're saying next, next yeah, meeting? Yeah, so at our meeting, uh, they first they said we should just push to August because it would be after the uh, council, council meeting, is that right? Yeah, because this mm -hmm. council meeting just started a minute ago, yeah. Yeah, and then I got your email with the asks and reached out to Marilyn and said, do you still want me to come on the 15th and I or thought should it, I push to the yeah. August? So we just talked about me coming because I haven't, I have, you know, I've really only come here once before mm -hmm. in all these years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is to be continued? Yes. No more? <laughs> nothing else on this topic? I got nothing. Uh, and, and you have, you're saying you want to move on, but you're in no hurry. Well, I'm in some mm -hmm. hurry, but I'm also the treasurer, and so I don't want to pull the plug on them mid-year if I don't have to. So, you know, so if you guys identify the person that you want to put in this seat this year, I'm sure we could reconfigure and put somebody else in the treasurer's spot. But if if not, if you don't, if somebody doesn't mm -hmm. immediately come to mind, then at least just get that person in place for January. Okay. Is that, is that enough warning? Is that enough notice? Okay. Um, well, shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Let's. One more topic on the agenda is a lease agreement for space to operate high speed internet. Do you want to um, a summary? We've had an informal relationship with the broadband company that changed, went from Barzaro, whatever it is, started in about 2019-2020. Um, he sold it to another company who continues to broadcast the internet somehow from our <laughs> building, from the side of our building. And, uh, that is our uh, maintenance garage. Our maintenance garage in Fairfield Pike. They're, they're an impressive little company who intends to compete with, um, uh, what's the name of Alta Fiber, what, which one was? Cincinnati Bell, um, they would like to um, through they would like to formalize our agreement. So that the first thing was they wanted to formalize our agreement with the lease, um, and then they decide they want to put fiber optics. Actually, um, they, they they want to make a a move in their company to um, amp amp up their company a little bit by piping fiber optics in. Um, to really go for it, and it'll be this about the same thing. It's just hanging on the side of the building, a little bit of equipment inside. Um, but in order to make that investment, um, they would need us to uh, 
to commit to three years because they can't mm -hmm. they can't make it that big of an investment without knowing they have three years of time. So, and we I questioned that we uh, you know, did this need to be uh, advertised, put out for bid, whatever, and we talked to the to prosecuting about attorney. About that, the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Prosecuting attorney said no, and you might be wondering what's in it for us. What's in it for us? Um, and this, well, what has been in it for us is free internet to to that facility. Um, but they they also want to offer five five hours a month at fifty dollars an hour. Um, any type of IT services we need. I, I didn't. I don't, told them I don't know that we'll need that, and we probably don't want to mix too many people into our IT situation. We already have Rebecca, um, but they they said they have a very a lot of talented people that could help us if we needed it. Um, so this is basically continuing this. Yeah, and, and we have had some other discussion in previous meetings, um, and Chris, you have. In the past, you've recused yourself from this. Mm -hmm. um, does that continue? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we have, I'm not going to read this contract. It's well, the, the terms pages. are such that we, we would agree to um, three years. Um, and a after that, either party could break the agreement with 90 days notice. Mm -hmm. It was longer before, but now it's 90 days. Um, also, yeah. If we if we broke the agreement within three years, um, we would be asked to to pay their pay out their contract with the fiber optic people. So, mm -hmm. so it's I guess it's a matter of do we want to uh, do we want to continue this relationship or or not? When I say don't don't want to read this, I have read it. I'm not going to read it to the crowd. Let's, I read it early. I would entertain a motion to uh, follow, uh, agree to this lease. I'll second. No, I would entertain a motion. Oh, I, 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 I move that we um, enter into this lease agreement. Uh, I second that. And I don't feel a need to discuss myself any further. So that's a lease agreement and a service agreement, two things? Yeah, the service, it, it's all outlined in there, yeah. Thank you. No more discussion on my part. Please call the roll. That's the movement second to um, accept the Northeast Broadband Contract and Service Agreement as presented. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Allister? Yes. And Mr. Murchard, the two's on notice, the motion is to pass. We have no more business on the agenda. It is 7.08. We have our longer meetings. And we really did not <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you, folks.